Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. Greetings. Greetings, viewers and subscribers. So when we start today's journey, we are in South St. Elizabeth. We are heading towards Petro Plains. Continue to sit back. Continue to relax and continue to enjoy this journey with me. Now, yesterday was Valentine's Day. Yesterday was a day when many persons were preaching love. But guess what? Yesterday was a day when hoodlums, not only were they preaching hate, they were acting on that hate. In this one video, I'm going to be telling you about five killings. All of them took place in Western Jamaica. Yesterday, February 14, Valentine's Day. Why may I tell you? Yesterday, I carried a story and I told you about a man. He's popularly known as Dapper. Dapper was chopped to death early yesterday morning. If you missed yesterday's video, I implore you to go back and watch it. There is a thumbnail for that video on your screen. So, in yesterday's video, I told you what the man who chopped and killed Dapper told the police. So as promised yesterday, here is an update to that story. Dapper's correct name is Gerard Coot. J-E-R-A-U-D. Coot. Dapper is said to be either in his late 20s or early 30s. Dapper's father, he was a very popular mechanic in Montego Bay. His father used to be known as Skills. There is Skills on your screen. Skills, he owned and operated a garage known as Skills Auto. It's on Makati Street in Montego Bay. Skills, he specialized in fixing racing cars. Now, as a youngster, Dapper, he used to work with his father in the garage. And when his father died in 2015, he started running the business. We are also learning that Dapper... He had mental issues. You know in Jamaica when somebody say, him head go and come, what that means? Well, Dapper's head go and come. Dapper was known to be a hard worker. He not trouble people. Dapper is not known to be a hoodlum. Word on the street is that Dapper, him used to deal with a female who live on the apartment. We are told that she's called <laughs> And contrary to rumors, the guy who chopped Dapper, he is not in a relationship with So, it's not a case of Joe Grind killing the right man or the right man killing Joe Grind as is being bandied about. We are told that before Dapper left to visit he was at a bar on Makati Street drinking. We are told that he had a lot of money in his pocket. A few minutes to 1 o'clock, it is said that Dapper, he said to a youngster who was at the bar, now, that youngster is about 18 years old. We are told that Dapper, he said to the youngster, Come with me now, come follow me go on a girl move. Meaning, he wanted the youngster to follow him. He was going to check a female. Dapper and the youngster, they drove off in his Toyota Voxy to the People's Arcade building and the rest, as they say, is history. Now, you remember I told you that the guy who chopped Dapper, he claimed that Dapper had a hammer in his hand. That is being denied by the youngster who went with Dapper. The youngster is also saying that Dapper shouted to him to run because a man attacked him with a machete. He's saying that Dapper didn't tell him to come and help kill anybody. We are still working on the case and there is a whole lot more to come. Based on all I have heard so far, I want to take time out to say condolences to Dapper's family and friends. Sad indeed. Now, in this next incident, this one took place last night, about some minutes to 9 o'clock. It took place at retirement in the Granville Police area in the parish of St. James. We are learning that residents of the area, they heard gunshots being fired and they called the police. When the police went and made checks, they saw a man lying motionless on his right side along a foot track in a pool of blood. He had gunshot wounds to his upper body. 
from all indication. This man, he died on the spot. This man, he was dressed in a white sleeveless shirt, white underpants and a khaki shorts. He appears to be in his 30s and he is of a dark complexion. Medium built and about 5 feet 6 inches tall. It is said that he sports a dreadlocks hairstyle. We are told that when this crime scene was processed, 8 9mm pen shells were recovered from the scene. Now, up to the time of recording this video, this man, he has not yet been identified. If and when we get his identity, we will definitely be updating this story. The mayhem. In this next incident, yesterday evening, Valentine's Day, February 14, 2023, about some minutes to 6 o'clock, residents, they saw that blue Toyota Crown Royal Saloon motor car. It was parked along a section of the roadway at Phoenix Drive in the Westgate area of Montego Bay. When they looked inside the car, what they saw made them call the police immediately. When the police arrived on the scene, they saw the lifeless body of a female in an upright position in the front left passenger seat of the car. She was partially wrapped in a towel and she had gunshot wounds to her head. Apparently, she died before she was found. This lady, she was later identified as that lady on your screen. Her name is Aretha Lara Clark. Aretha is said to be in her late 40s and we are told that she celebrated her birthday on Monday, February 13, one day before she was killed. Aretha was a craft vendor and she lived at Hendon Narwood in the parish of St. James. We are also learning that the Toyota Crown motor car it is registered to a man from John's Road in the parish of St. Catherine. Sad indeed. The mayhem. Now, in this next incident, that man on your screen, his name is Albert Reed. Albert, he's popularly known as Tony R. Jack. Tony, he was born on Emancipation Day in 1981. He would be celebrating his 42nd birthday on August 1. Later this year, Tony is from Roampton in the parish of St. James. On Tuesday, January 12th last year, about 2 o'clock in the early morning, two young people were shot and killed at Roampton in St. James. Hoodlums invaded their home and took them out execution style. The male, his name is Sheehan Spencer and the female, her name is Tony Ann Reed. She was only 15 years old at the time when she was killed. Tony Ann was Albert Reed, also known as Tony's daughter. Listen to Tony talking about his daughter later that day after she was killed. Listen to this. For any reason, I'm telling you, if you come home, I said, Tony, whatever you do, I realize I can't stop you. So come home. We just want you to come home. Me just want to steer you with what you do and guide you. You know, just come on back. And he said, Daddy, may I come on? And then I go find my daughter dead. And maybe I could have tried to get him back or something. But people are seeing him and realize that he can change his identity and change up him, bleach out and all that and something. There. So people don't recognize that she. You don't know if you cope right now because I love my daughter. Mm -hmm. I mother run away for three of them get for me and me take care of Tony and come out of the center of school. I have it. I don't have it easy in my young days when I tell her. Them, raise them without a mother. Sad indeed. Well, one year and one month later, the father met the same fate like his daughter. Yesterday, Valentine's Day, we are told that Tony, he carried a female to St. Catherine and he was heading back to Montego Bay with her. She had gone to St. Catherine to visit her family members. We are told that the female, she's from the parish of St. Catherine, but she's living in the parish of St. James and she's working at a popular hotel in Montego Bay as a chef. This female is said to be in her mid-twenties. I am telling you about this female because I want to show you something. I'm not going to give you her name but on January 29, a few days ago, she posted that on her Facebook page. It is on your screen. She said in that post, 
I am in a chapter of my life where I have to pray about every move I make. Hashtag God time. You see that? So, Tony, he was driving his white 1990 Toyota Carola motor car. Yes, that one that he's standing in front of on your screen. He was driving on Jimmy Cliff Boulevard. He was heading into Montego Bay and the female, she was sitting in the front passenger seat. This was almost 6.30 and we are told that the traffic on the road was heavy. And reaching right where Aquasal is located, a hoodlum approached the car at the front right door. That is the driver's door. He already had a gun in his hand. He put the gun at Tony's head and squeezed. Bam, bam, bam. He then ran back across the road towards Aquasal and made good his escape. The female, she ran out of the car. She was shot. She received a gunshot wound to her right hand. This female, she was rushed to a nearby hospital by a passerby where she was treated and admitted. This female, she was clearly not the target. One could easily assume that it was a stray bullet that hit her. The target was 20 and in one or two seconds, it was all over for him. From all indication, Tony died on the spot. The police were called and when they processed this crime scene, three 9mm pen shells were recovered from the scene. So the question is, <laughs> the question is, how did the killer know that Tony was driving on Bottom Road instead of Top Road? Think about it. And I know some of you, you know. I know some of you. Don't say what I did not say. I am not pointing any fingers at the female who was in the car. But somebody might have known where Tony had gone. And somebody could have waited out by airport and see where Tony turned off. So, please, don't say what I'm not saying. This female who was in the car, she is not a suspect. Alright? The mayhem. The me so let me ask you know something. <laughs> let me ask you know something. Have you hit on the love button as yet? If you have not yet done so, remember to do it. Also, if you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed, hit on the subscribe button. As also, hit on the notification bell. Then click all so that whenever we upload a new video, you will be the first to be notified. In the final story for today, that man on your screen... His name is Ardell Saman. Ardell is 39 years old and he was a truck driver. Ardell, he lived at Garden District in the White House area in the parish of Westmoreland. So, this is what we are learning. You remember that I carried a story on Sunday. Well, I carried two stories in the two videos that I carried on Sunday. In the last video, I read a WhatsApp message from a PNL detective. A man named Damian Thompson, also known as Dasika. He was shot and killed at Garden in White House. Two other men, known as Prammy and Scribble, they were shot and injured. That incident took place Saturday night. I also told you that there were gangs warring with each other in the area. This has resulted in mayhem. It is said that Prammy, he was the target for the hoodlums in that attack. Well, it is said that Ardell, he is living very close to where that shooting took place Saturday night. Now, listen to me carefully. Listen carefully to what I'm about to say. I am not here saying that this is so, but I've heard this from more than one sources. Word on the street is that it was Ardell who told the Saturday night shooter that Prami was there. Are you following me? Now, try and understand this. This may very well be a rumor, but don't you think it's possible that gangsters who are friends of Prami or Dasyeka who was killed might have heard the same thing? Of course it's possible. So, Ardell, he works at a hardware in White House in Westmoreland. He does delivery. Ardell, he left work yesterday, driving his white Isuzu 
motor truck. We are told that he normally parked the truck on the compound of the White House Church of God of Prophecy. Only a wall separates his home and the church. Ardell, he was about to park the truck when a blue Toyota Axio motor car drove up behind him and stopped. A hoodlum jumped out of the car with a gun in his hand. The hoodlum, he opened gunfire at Ardell. Ardell, he managed to jump out of the truck and ran into his yard. But the hoodlum, he decided that today, your family is getting the gift of your death for their Valentine's Day. The hoodlum, he chased Ardell and continued firing at him. Ardell was hit and he fell to the ground. The hoodlum, he went over Ardell and empty the clip on Ardell. The hoodlum, he then jumped back into the blue Toyota Axio motor car and he and his crony, they made good their escape. Ardell, he was rushed to the Black River Hospital where he was pronounced D-E-A-D whilst he was being treated. The mayhem continues. Blessed love everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend. About Popeye News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. Quick Silver Sea, if we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Jamaica live in unity. If we just unite, what a country this will be. Criminals, they're